Yeah, good morning. Uh, today we're looking at the YW Robotics uh, power supply board. This board is designed to work uh, on a breadboard. And we see that we've got an adapter jack for a wall wart and a USB plug for using USB connectivity and also we have these straps at the top of the board now if you can if I can get out close enough you can see that these straps are set this one is set for 5 volts it's strapped to the off post in the 5 volts and you can also put it on the far two posts which would be 3 volts or you can put it on the center two posts which would be off so this rail coming out of this board is strappable for either no voltage 3 volts or 5 volts we've also got these breakout pins that also provide 3 and 5 volts and on this other side, uh, another set of connectors for the other rail for a normal breadboard, standard breadboard, that does exactly the same thing with the 3 and 5 volt breakout. Th that one I have set for 3.3 volts. So the upper rail, or the left side, I'm getting 3.3 volts, right side 5 volts. Okay, now when I look at the bottom of this board, you see I've got four pins on either side and they're spaced with the proper spacing to fit into this breadboard okay so if I take this board take this board and align it to the rails and just simply press it down now I've connected this power supply board which is the lower rail supplying 5 volts the upper rail supplying 3.3 .3 volts and ground um, and connected it to this breadboard I've also put a jumper here which jumps uh, the breadboard uh, sections because the breadboard normally splits where you can have different powers on the different ends uh, but uh, in this case, I want the power to extend for the entire length of that. So I've strapped the red power through. And here I've strapped the uh, ground through. So I'm actually going to be provided ground and 3.3 .3 volts to another little device I've got over here. We'll talk about that later. Once you get this simple little breadboard here, you can just take your wall wart connector, plug it in. And this is actually a nine, uh, no, this is actually a 12 volt wall wart power connector coming in there. So I've got this, I've got this uh, wall wart plugged in to the breadboard. And as you can see, this LED, green LED, is off. So I do have a switch here. If I press this switch, it comes on. Now what this switch actually does, it selects which source you want to use for power. And when the switch is pushed in the down position, it switches to the wall wart side, the 12 volt power, and illuminates. If, if I plugged in the USB cable I would, and wanted to use it, I could put the switch up pull the wall wart power off and power this board from a, from a standard USB connector on a computer so I wouldn't actually have to have a wall wart to drive it. Okay, uh, the board also has a couple of chips. These are voltage regulators. One of them is a 5 volt and one of them is a 3.3 .3 volt regulator. And that's what provides the power on this rail. And as, as I've said here, I've got my 3.3 my .3 volts strapped through from the board. I've got my ground strapped through. And then down here, I take my ground pin. And I'm connecting it to this little module here. 
the WTV020 SD Mini, which uses a uh, micro SD memory card and provides audio, mono audio, that you could use in, in various projects. And I'm going to be using this in some of my modeling projects. In order to connect this thing up, uh, although it can be microprocessor controlled, in this case I'm choosing not to do that. So what I've got is I've got my 3.3 volts connection here to pin 16. I have this yellow and orange is actually my speaker connection. This black connector here is going to pin 8 which is ground. And so once I turn the power on, I also have another little dangly wire here because I'm using this kind of in a test mode and if you're going to use one of these chips, I suggest that you only hook up power, ground, and the speaker. Get your little test clip and clip it to ground also. You can hit the reset, which is pin one. And then hit play, which is pin 9. And I actually have that connected to the speaker. I can go to the next track. And then back to the beginning. Okay, okay I just went and touched the reset to stop the playback. Uh, and again, on this sound module, uh, it, I'm using a one gig card. I'm using about 200 meg of, of sound files now. The sound files have to be recorded in a special format and they're mono. But in this case it's for a model uh, and the model definitely does not need stereo. So because I'm going to be using this, this speaker, so this is actually a speaker that's going to be installed in the model space. So uh, this is basically all I need and as you might have heard earlier the sound quality is pretty good even for a mono sound and we'll go through the software and converting a uh, file or group of files to use on the sound card but the other thing that's good about this sound card it's, it can be used in a standalone mode with a previous and next and reset and you can actually also incorporate volume uh, controls uh, on this module. But the, the other thing about this card, it can be controlled uh, by a microcontroller. And I'm going to be actually using an Arduino to control this module. But if you're first working, if you decide to get one of these for work with this module, I highly recommend you set it up in this basically naked mode with the speakers connections, connect, I mean speaker connected, ground connected, and 3.3 volts connected, and uh, install your uh, sound files to your uh, SD, micro SD card, and get it working in this format. Uh, I, I have to admit something here, when I first started working with this module, and I was pushing this chip in, it gets a little tight before it fully seats. And I worked on this thing an hour before I noticed that this card was not inserted as far as possible. And you really kind of have to give it a little push there uh, to get it to, to seat fully. But once I did that, everything was fine and the card worked great. But that's why I'm saying. Uh, get it working in standalone mode, then move to controlling it with your 
uh, microcontroller, in this case I'm going to be using an Arduino, uh, but get it working in standalone mode with your sound files working first. There's also test sound files on the internet and conversion software to convert those sound files on the internet. Uh, I'll include the links in this video, but uh, it's, a, it's a tiny uh, little circuit, not much bigger than the uh, micro SD card itself. So uh, it's a perfect size to incorporate uh, within for a model. 